Serious parents of Reddit who decided to cut contact with your children. What's the story? Cheap and easy to obtain heroin was the beginning of the end. Twice he robbed me of all my possessions, even my car. One 8 month stint, in state jail during which I visited with his daughter every weekend, and upon release I brought him home only to be robbed again. Three failed attempts in recovery centers, after which he and his girlfriend abandoned their children leaving them with me for 4 years with no contact of any kind. At 32 yo he is now unable to remain out of the county jails for more than a week at a time. I'm done. So I had my son early, around 17. The girl I had him with moved away, before I met him. 5 years later I get sued for child support, so I paid, and decided to try to take some care of this child. Fast forward to him in high school, I never got to spend more than the summers with him due to him living so far away, and the fact that his mom is a bitch. Anyway I find out that he hasn't been to school in literally years, so much so that by almost 20, he hadn't graduated grade 9. Things go wrong in my life too. My ex-wife decides to leave me for some woman, and my son shows up at my doorstep saying that his mom kicked him out. I told him that he had to go to school if he's going to live with me. He finally agrees, and I start finding out how terrible his mom did for him in school. He was labeled as severely learning disabled, schizophrenic, and was prescribed antipsychotics, which I'd never seen him take. It turns out he told his mom that he was seeing things, and after she took him to every doctor in the city, the first few couldn't find anything wrong with him. She finally got a few diagnoses. I took him to my doctors, and find out that he was playing along, so that the school would give him an easier time. I get the school to give him a chance and he finally starts on as English math, etc. And, to everyone, except me, surprise, he passes with high grades. So much so that he is accepted into college with a minimal of effort. Figuring he turned over a new leaf, I decide to buy him a car, put a couple of months rent down on his own apartment, and give him a couple thousand dollars to help with tuition. Not to mention that I bought him a laptop, a bunch of dishes, pots, and pans etc. He looked so proud when he moved in, and I remember beaming all the way home after helping him move in the week before school starts. I see him for the next couple of weekend to ensure that he is transitioning to his new place well enough. Although he seemed a bit lonely at times, he seemed to be adjusting quite well. Two weeks after school starts, I get a call from the school telling me that my refund was processed. I immediately call my son, much to my surprise his cell phone was cut off. Even though I'm the one who pays for it, I go to his apartment to see if everything is okay and the superintendent told me he moved out last week. I haven't heard from him since, but through the grapevine I found out that a friend of his won a legal battle and got a few hundred thousand dollars, so they pulled their money to become big time drug dealers. I have no idea where he is now, I haven't heard from him, his mom hasn't, his grandparents haven't, nobody has. Took a bit to decide it if I wanted to share my story, but here goes. I'm the father in question. I have three kids, two daughters and one son. They're all adults. I got married at 20, and we had them one after another. For years, my wife and I blamed ourselves about how my youngest girl turned out. Being so young, right out of community college, I wasn't making a lot, so I did the best I could. But we wonder if it was nutrition or the shithole we stayed in or something that made her be born with severe BPD. We didn't know what it was at first. She was really difficult. We tried our best to raise her well. By the time we figured out what was wrong with her, she had set in really bad behaviors. We still think she's the one that mutilated the neighbor's cat, but can't prove it. As of two years ago, she refused to take her medications, was sleeping around with whoever would shoot her up with drugs, stealing money, and generally being really difficult. We told her to leave and never come back. Tried to get her into a state mental place but it wasn't an option. So we just closed our doors and moved shortly after. Honestly don't know what happened to her since. I tell people I only have two kids. Wife is devastated, but I'm just relieved. Sorry, baby K. I'll try to keep this short, because diving into all of what has happened that lead to us cutting contact would be a novel. When I married my husband he already had two older children that lived with their mother. 
my husband and I ended up having two kids of our own. While my oldest was an infant my stepchildren moved in with us and that's when everything started. They caused so many problems for us. I'm talking heavy drugs, sneaking out and getting arrested, you name it. The older of the two called CPS twice and made up lies about me being abusive. As a new mom the investigations were terrifying, but in the end they found their claims to be false. The final straw of them living with us was when we got wind of them pissing off the wrong crowd and the possibility of our home getting shot up. Their dad sent them to live with their mother. I'm just going to jump to when the actual cut off happened, but keep in mind we had an endless amount of horrible incidents with them over the years, and we tried to help them countless times. They were both in their 20s at this point. Essentially, we discovered they were stealing from my side of the family. They robbed my sister of her fine jewelry, and took what we totaled to be around dollar sign 25k from three family members. Beyond that, they had a drug operation going on in a family member's summer cottage. The family member didn't know they were even there as he lived elsewhere most of the time. When confronted by their dad, they blew up. They said some of the most hateful things I've ever heard, and spit in his face. That was it for us. They took advantage of people that love them very much and had no remorse for it. My stepson is a mess. My husband and his ex-wife divorced when SS was 18 months old and mom had done whatever she could to cut dad completely out of his life until SS was 8 when she showed up at our door with SS in tow and his bags. She said she couldn't handle him anymore. All he would do was fight with his siblings. So if we didn't take him then she was going to take him to the children's home. Of course my husband was excited to finally spend time with his son, and he would get to bond with his little half-brother who was 4 at the time and stepsister who was 10. It became apparent very quickly that he had been fed lie after lie about his dad he would gleefully share very detailed stories about the abuse that he remembered that he and his mom suffered at the hands of my husband. SS was in therapy, but really started escalating dangerous behaviors my daughter would wake up in the middle of the night with him standing over her saying next time you'll never wake up. So we put a lock on her door which he broke through with ease. We put a deadbolt on her door he broke the door frame trying to get to her. His little brother would walk by, and he would kick him as hard as he could. He bit him, until he would draw blood. The last straw for me was, when he barricaded himself in his room with his little brother. I could hear my son screaming when I finally got in my SS was molesting him. That for me was the last straw. He needed more help than what his therapist or we could do for him. The next day child services was contacted and he was removed from our home. A few weeks later CPS gave us pages and pages of psychological evaluations that his mom had on him. Pages of her blaming dad for each of his issues, lies that he had beaten molested him. Although there were statements from doctors that had clearly outlined that mom and her family had some seriously undiagnosed mental issues. There was so much information that would have been helpful before he came to live with us. I would never tell my husband that he cannot see his son, but his son is never allowed around my children I made that promise to them both. And I hate that my husband is in the middle, but for our safety I've cut off any contact with my stepson. My husband's oldest daughter is not part of our lives at this point. We basically discovered that everything she ever said was a lie. She got involved with a younger guy that's a real asshole. He's horrible to her and her daughters. She called the police on him, kicked him out, said she was never going to see him again. We made it clear that he would not be allowed around us or the other kids for any reason. She says she's pregnant. His dad blasts them on Facebook for being idiots, pointing out what an irresponsible mother she already is. She goes on a rant about how she pays her bills and takes care of her girls. The whole time, I'm thinking bitch, I paid your gas, so it wouldn't get shut off. I'm apparently the only one attempting to feed your kids something other than marshmallows, and I'm the only one that ever expects them to behave. Not to mention the million times I've cleaned caked on dirt from their feet or necks, because she won't bathe them properly. She had a miscarriage the next day, wanted some kind of sympathy, even though she had been hoping for a miscarriage, until her bio mom convinced her that she needed another grandbaby. Anyway, a day or two later she asks for a ride. I ask who slash when slash where. She wants us to give abusive ex that has already moved back in with her a ride to the store. Fuck no. Reminded her that we are not doing anything for him ever. Pointed out that it's pretty disrespectful of our wishes to try to force him on us. She threw a tantrum 
he threw a tantrum. Told us get over it, or don't speak to her, and the grandbabies again. I told her I'm not having that abusive piece of shit around her siblings. She can either respect that, or move on without us. She chose the abuser. We've ran into them driving around town a few times. The guy will literally hang out the window of the car screaming, making faces, and flipping us off every time. They act like they are still 12. I miss my grandchildren, but I don't miss their mother. I don't love her, she doesn't love me, and we have nothing in common. All names are changed. When I was 22 I met a beautiful woman who was in half my college classes, but was a mature student. When Ella was 14 she'd given birth to a daughter Anna. By the time Ella and I moved in together Anna was already 15. It was like having a roommate, Anna was a great kid and all that jazz, but she wasn't interested in spending all that much time with some random man. Then 3 years later she moved out, and I became the random ex roommate who covers her tuition. People seem to think it's a tragedy, but we don't dislike each other, we are just not interested in contacting each other. We both love Ella and sometimes we happen to be spending time with her at the same time, like when Anna comes home for Christmas. When I married Ella I promised to take care of Anna, I don't regret that, but my care falls mostly on the financial side, although I went to every game she had, and every teacher conference, we just failed to bond. She's more like a distant cousin than a daughter. My 33 year old daughter chose drugs and thug life over her husband and two boys. Hasn't seen her boys in 4 years. They're only 7 and 5. The oldest remembers her, the youngest does not. I've been dealing with her darkness since she was in 4th grade. Took her to countless therapists in her youth. She convinced them all she was fine. I tried to help her through probation and rehab again last year in the hopes of reuniting her with her boys. She was snorting, now she's shooting. Nothing legal to keep her from these boys. She chose drugs. I'm done. Never realized what an epidemic this has become, until I started talking to people who are dealing with the same thing with loved ones. It's definitely effed up. I had a daughter when I was fairly young. I married her mother and spent a few hellish years with her until divorce became necessary. We agreed to split custody, so long as she received full physical custody. It made sense under three circumstances. Within a few years, it became obvious my emotionally volatile ex-wife was just poisoning our daughter with absurd lies, and to some extent, no doubt, her family as well. My kid became distant, and then anxious around me. Her mom began to move an awful lot and it, eventually, became undeniable that she was intentionally hiding from me. I tracked her down on Christmas 2013 at a house her father directed me towards. She was livid that I showed up to say Merry Christmas and drop off gifts for my daughter and her younger sister. My daughter logged at me like a complete stranger, even frightened. They were never home when I tried to visit after this and soon moved again. Realize no contact was available to me. Her mom called me front her mother's number months after and asked for a large sum of cash to pay for school stuff. It was April I think. I asked her where my daughter was before I agreed to anything and she got angry and hung up. I stopped trying I guess 